welcome to Splash Studio Online. My name is Jessie. I'm going to be teaching you guys this painting here called Goodwill Hunting. This is a very kind of contemporary, um, colorful, graphic type of painting, so don't be afraid to kind of mix up the colors you want to use if you want to create a bit more of a fall scene or a winter or summer, you know, feel free to kind of choose what colors and what patterns you want to make. This has a lot of room for you guys to kind of uh, be creative. Uh, that being said, you guys, since this is a video, during any point, if you need to take a break, let this dry, or um, kind of work on it while I'm still talking, or, you know, anything, just pause the video, and then whenever you're ready to come back and um, come back and start painting, feel free to unpause it. So you guys, we've got a few uh, supplies here for you guys to go over. We've got this set of brushes. Should be four of them that you get. You have this large flat one, the medium flat one, the medium round one, and the tiny detail one. And I'll be telling you which ones we're going to be using of those um, for every step. You guys should also have this nice little water cup for you guys to put your brushes in. This is a great um, place for them to just kind of live when you're not using them um, so they don't dry out. Or you can use them to wash off your brushes in between colors as well. Lastly, we've got this nice little rag that's great for drying off your brushes once you have washed them. So we'll be using all of that as well as um, the colors of paint that we have here today. Now to start off with this painting, we're going to be starting off in the sky and moving down to the hills and adding details from there. So you can see we've got some oranges and purples in there, so we'll start with the very top with that orange. Now it's a very, very light orange, so what I'm going to do is actually dip into pure white to start with, with my largest flat brush. I've got pure white, and I'm just going to brush this across the top of my canvas, just to get like a nice, like wet on, when, wet, on wet blending place to start with. So that being said, I'm going to just dip my brush very uh, loosely very lightly, I should say, into my orange. I'm going to mix it into that white that I have on my palette, so I've got a really light orange here. And I'm just going to draw that across the top of my canvas, so that I've got a really bright white uh, strip of orange here at the top. Go over once more. There we go. And then I'm just going to wipe, wash my brush, and then wipe it off. I'm going to bring that white a little bit down where that orange stops, bring it down a little bit more, and then I'm going to mix a purple color for the remainder of my sky. And what that's going to be is going to be a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. And to start off, we will mix that with some white to get a really light purple. So there I have um, my dark purple and then I made a light purple then as well. So first I'm going to stick that white purple on my brush and I'm going to blend that. Maybe pick some more white up and blend that into that white strip right before the orange. So that blends nicely together and doesn't get all muddy because purple and orange generally don't mix very well together, so I like to create a kind of buffer of white in between where those colors meet, so they blend very nicely. So I'm going to get that purple again, bring it down a little bit, and bring it back up. And then I'm going to dip into that darker purple that I had, and this is going to be kind of the bottom of our sky. So I'm going to bring this on top of that layered purple that I had, Kind of create a darker version and blend it upwards, going back and forth to really blend those colors together. And there you go. That is our sky. Now to bring that color down into our hills, we're going to create kind of a strip of blue. And I'm just going to wash my brush off and dip into pure blue. Just brush that across the very bottom of my canvas, or of my um, purple that I have there. And then what you're gonna do is, now bear with me, this might sound a little odd, but what you're gonna do is go into your white, don't 
uh, wash off your brush, you're just going to dip into pure white and cover the rest of your canvas with that white. Now this is just to create another nice little area for some wet on wet blending so that we can get some nice texture for these hills that we're going to be making. So right now I've got a flat field of wet white paint and what we're going to be doing is you can see that there's some kind of hill shapes here in the background of our painting and what we're going to do is I'm going to actually switch to my medium flat brush and I'm going to dip into pure blue and we're going to be creating we're going to be creating a series of kind of textured striped hills. So the first one we're going to do is in the very back and we're just going to make this hill shape kind of bring that color down. And again, this is a very kind of a gestural, painterly style we're going for, so it doesn't have to be like a solid color. And then there's also one in the back that we're going to make, just kind of striping this blue color across those hills. And I might add one more in the back here as well. And basically you're just kind of crisscrossing this blue across these hills that we're creating, kind of creating these lines, layering the paint onto the white so that it blends very nicely and very um, painterly, I guess you would call it. Now if you want, you can also go back to your white. You can wipe off your brush, wash it off, and go back to your white and add some more stripes of white onto your hills. This is just to create a nice little base for when we put our trees and all of those other interesting like textures. It's just to give it a nice little base to start from. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of, like I said, a base. So you're just kind of going back and forth with the blues and the whites until you get a good shape that you're looking for. And I'm kind of striping this color on There we go. I'm gonna say I like how that looks and this is gonna be a good time for our first break, guys. So I just really laid that color on. We're gonna take a bit of a longer break. So I'm gonna say 20 minutes for this all to dry and then we're gonna come back. Um, so feel free to pause the video and whenever you're ready to come back in, just unpause it and we can get going again. guys so now that this is all nice and dry or at least a little more dry we're gonna go in and start to add some of these many many trees you see here in the background of our painting now there are lots of layers of trees we're gonna start on the farthest ones and all these white ones first so the farthest ones you can see are all uh, black so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab you can use either your medium brown brush or your detail brush. I'm gonna grab my detail brush because I want these trees to be small. So I'm gonna take that and then I'm gonna dip it into pure black. And we're just gonna start to make some of these trees. So these are gonna be very thin, spindly, and feel free to have some of them kind of go off the canvas. Um, but the main idea here is to just have some um, straight lines, some slanted lines maybe, some Y-shaped trees, some branches, um, nothing too crazy, but I'm just going to do this on both of the sides of my canvas, maybe leaving an area where the trees are shorter to look like they're coming, um, they're going backwards in the distance more, um, to look like, to have a little bit of depth here, but I'm just doing some 
straight lines and a bunch of different shapes of trees here. You can also add some that are a little bit closer to us. So I'll take my black and I'll just bring it down a little bit, make some thicker trees that are a little bit closer to us. Okay. Now that we've got those on there, we can go in and add some white trees as well. So most of the white trees are kind of concentrated here in the front, but you do see some um, little streaks of white in the back, so we'll add that as well. So I'll just take my detail brush, dip it in pure white, and just start with the same kind of thing, although I'm not doing as many white trees in the back, because we want to keep it looking like um, that area is a bit farther away. Then I'll start to add more um, coming towards us, so they're a bit thicker, a bit bigger. And I'm thinking of these trees as like three different levels of trees. So like the ones in the very back, very thin, as you get closer, there's your second plane of trees that gets a bit bigger. And then once you get to your foreground trees, I'm actually going to switch to my medium round brush just to make it a bit faster. And you can see that we've got a couple of trees here in our foreground that are thicker um, with these colorful marks on them. So we'll start with white as our base for those. And these are going to be much thicker, so I'll start with a thick trunk for a base. And if your uh, white bleeds into your black, that is a-okay, we'll be covering this up with other colors anyway, so that's not a problem. And you just want to remember that trees will always get thinner um, the farther they grow out. So they're thicker at the base, and then as you go up, they will start to get thinner. And then one last one, kind of right over here. So now that we've got those, we're going to start to add some more detail into those trees as well. You can see that these colorful little um, patches, I guess you would call them, little patches of color on these white trees, as well as some other um, black kind of trees that are coming out of them, coming near them, and a little, a little bit of outlining. So what we're going to do next, in a couple of minutes actually, we want to let this dry for a little bit is we're going to come back in and start with those colors, but take a 5-10 minute break just to let this all dry and then whenever you're ready to come back, just unpause the video. So once this is all dry, we're going to go in and start making all those colorful little patches on our birch trees here. So what I'm going to do is grab my medium flat brush. I'm going to really get all of the water and paint off of it because we're going to be doing kind of a dry brushing technique. So what I'm going to do first is grab some orange, or not orange, sorry, brown. I'm going to wipe most of it off just so I have a little bit on my brush and what we're going to do is make sure it's nice and flat and kind of curve our brush around our tree like that so you can see it has a little bit of texture kind of like a birch tree. So I'm just using this technique along all of my white trees in the front to give them a bit of texture. I'm making sure that I'm following the curve of the tree so that it looks like it's wrapping around the tree, giving it some dimension. Alright, 
So that's our first layer of color. Now we're going to go back in and do a bunch of other colors. So first, I'm going to clean off my brush. And then I'm going to dip into some pure blue. Do the same kind of thing where I wipe off most of the color so I can get a dry brush effect. And then I'll go in with this color. And don't feel, um, don't hesitate to kind of overlap this color over the brown. It kind of creates an interesting kind of half tone over that brown. Okay. So now that we've got that color down, we're going to go in with a black. So same thing, I'm really drying off my brush, getting just a little bit of black on there, wiping most of it off, and then we're going to go in and use this color on our brush trees as well. Last color we're going to use for now is um, just a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to do the same thing, dip it in yellow, and I'm just going to put this color on in a couple areas. Now this one is a bit more subtle since when you go over um, the other colors it does that cool half tone thing, especially with the blue. It gets a little bit of green in there, which I don't mind, so I'm just using this in a couple areas where I want to kind of bump up the colors a little bit. Alright, next we're going to add a little bit of dimension to our trees and how we're going to do that is by adding a little bit of black to the sides of our birch trees and adding in a few more other trees as well. So I'm going to dip into pure black and we're just going to outline one side of our trees just to give them a bit of dimension to kind of differentiate them from one another. It also gives it a kind of a cool graphic look, so. Alright, and then last thing, we'll just add a couple more of those black trees to the side to kind of frame the painting. I'm just taking pure black. You can see this tree over here. See, it kind of goes off to the off of the side of the canvas. Has a couple branches coming off. And it just goes all the way up. This is just a way to kind of frame all of that in there. And then there's another small one over here. take another short little break to let this all dry before we go in and start adding all of the details on the ground and all of that. So take another five minute break and then when you're ready to jump back in just unpause the video. all done we're gonna go ahead and add some of this lovely texture here on the ground now there's a lot involved in it so I'm gonna take it step by step so first we're gonna start by adding some white and black streaks into the ground so I'm gonna start by grabbing pure white on my medium round brush 
And we're just going to add some streaks on our ground like there's some snow kind of gathering and I'm not being too careful it's just kind of really sketchy really streaky and you can do this also to hide the trunks of where your trees connect with the ground it's a nice way to kind of pull it all together I'm just making sure my streaks of snow get a little bit thinner and smaller as I go back and again I'm not really hesitating to cover up the grounds of some of my trunks Okay, there's a lot involved in this painting, so feel free to add layers and different textures and maybe have some snow in the air. You can see there's a lot of white things in the air here, like snow is falling perhaps. So really add whatever textures you want to make this really look like a full painting. Got a lot of white going on there, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my brush. And now we're gonna add some of those black streaks in there as well. This is more for like maybe where some shadows are, so I'll add this behind some trees. Underneath the white, I'm trying not to cover up the white as much as I can. Just adding this kind of in tandem with the white that we had. You can see there's also a couple little black dots in the air, maybe some different uh, textures in the air, just kind of flowing freely to add to this really kind of whimsical atmosphere here. I'm going to switch to my medium flat brush because now we're going to add some more colors to our ground to kind of tie it all together. One of those is going to be a light, a really, um, oh, I shouldn't say light, it's more of like a really bright green here. So what I'm going to do is mix together some blue and some yellow. There's a teensy tiny bit of white to brighten it up. So that's my green right there. And we're gonna use this color kind of the way we did on the trees where I'm using the flat of my brush and I'm kind of wiping it off a little bit just to kind of create another level of color on the ground here. Maybe some grass is poking through, maybe it's early winter and the snow has just fallen. So we're still seeing some of that grass showing through. Maybe I'll get a lighter version of that in there, so I'll add more white, more yellow. Add that in there as well. But again, I'm basically just layering colors on top of each other to get this really kind of mystical and full atmosphere here. The last color we see here on the ground is brown, so I'm just going to go in with regular brown, pure brown here, and kind of do much the same thing. I'm not adding as much because I want it to stay nice and colorful, so I'm just adding this kind of in between the green here and there. And I'm making sure I don't bring the green or the brown any higher than the ground. I don't want these colors to be in the sky so we can still have a differentiation of where the ground and the sky meet. Another thing we want to add, guys, is you can see some of these, like, there's like twigs and branches kind of poking up from the ground, maybe where some shrubs are. So you can take um, some brown as well and just add some vertical, really thin vertical lines get some interest into the ground there, break up all that horizontal space. And then you can also go in with some black, kind of in the same areas as the brown. Alright, so the last thing we're going to do on the ground here for now is just to add some of these really chunky 
black and white um, clumps here. So I'm going to go in with my flat brush. And first I'm going to grab some black. We're just kind of laying this really thickly on in patches as like a just another level of texture. There's a lot of textures going on here. I just want to make sure that these patches get smaller as they go back in space. And then we can also add some white in the same fashion. So that is it for the ground. We want to make sure that we get give this some time to nicely dry. If there's any other details you guys want to add on your own time, go for it. But I'm going to give this a nice little time to dry, and then we'll come back and work on the deer. Alrighty guys, so now that this is all dry, we're going to go in and make our two little bucks as the last, uh, last kind of step here. So for that, I'm going to grab my medium round brush, because I love sketching with that one. And then we're going to mix a really dark purple. So I'm going to grab a lot of blue, some red, and then some black to get a really nice, really dark purple. <clears throat> and then we're going to start with some simple shapes for the buck in the foreground. His body is kind of like a really round uh, rectangle. So I'm going to start over here in the bottom area, bottom right area, and I'm just going to sketch a rectangle, some rounded edges. Now you can see his legs definitely go off of the canvas, you don't have to worry about hooves. So we're just going to sketch his legs, kind of coming off, and you just have to make sure that the legs are thicker towards the body than they are going down. So we have one there, we'll have another kind of in front of that. So he's got his two front legs and we're going to go on the back legs now. <clears throat> the back legs kind of come curved off of the end of the back and again they're going to be thicker towards the body than they are um, down below. And so you only really need to sketch one of the back legs because they can kind of be in the same spot. And if you want, you can sketch a little tail coming off. It's up to you. And then for the head and neck, I'm just going to have a thick line coming up. A little chunky little mound. And then his head is just going to, it's kind of looking backwards for his body. So I'll have his snout coming backwards off his neck. And then round it on top, and then a little knob for his muzzle. <clears throat> and then his ears are two little leaf shapes coming off the top of his head. And lastly, his antlers. You might want to switch to your detail brush for this. Um, I'm pretty comfortable using my round brush, so I'm okay with that. But if you want a more delicate touch, you can use your um, detail brush. For his antlers, there's just two curved lines going up one on each side, and then some inner lines curving towards the center. And there is our deer number one. He's kind of hard to see right now, so we'll come back to him once he's dry and add some defining um, lighter marks to kind of fill that in. And then our second one is just kind of coming out from behind this tree. So I will add, I'll pick my, the tree that he's coming out of for me. It's going to be this one right here. And I'll add his little half rectangle body coming out. And this one, he has a bent leg, so I'll have like a little angled line coming from the front of him. And then a straighter one going down. And again, since there's a lot of things going on in this painting, you don't really have to worry about where his feet land. We'll say it's kind of covered up by some snow maybe, and you don't have to worry about it. And then his neck comes outward from his body, like that. And then he's got another little snout coming out from his neck with a rounded end for his muzzle. We'll have those two leaf-shaped ears again. And then he's got the same kind of antlers coming out. So two curved lines with some curved lines coming off of those. So that's the shape of our two bucks. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my detail brush <clears throat> and I'm going to dip into, let's make a light blue. So I'm going to grab some blue and a little bit of white, not too much. We don't want it to be too much of a contrast, but got my light blue and we're just going to go around the edges of our deer, around where his legs will be, around his face, so we can kind of um, define his features there. So I'll go around the outside of his body first. Kind of have his leg coming down here. His other leg behind that. Have his body. Other leg. And then I'll go for his face. So it's got, I'm outlining his snout there. Going around for his cheek. There we go. And then his neck and body around like that. Outline his ears as well as kind of outlining his antlers. And I'll go ahead and do the same for our other buck. That way they look kind of mystical as well as you can actually see their body shapes. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add some texture into the deer themselves with that same light blue. It's just a little bit of spotting on them. A little bit of stippling, we may call it, or just dots on his coat. Just to make him stand out a little bit more. don't have to worry about a face for this unless you want to because this is a more kind of a graphic representation more painterly as opposed to kind of realistic but if you want to add a face that is totally an option for you but there you have that and the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with my detail brush and some white and I want to kind of bring back some of those whiter trees that might have gotten lost in all that detail so I'm just gonna dip into white and I'm going to outline my trees and add maybe some more white into them. Bring them back to the foreground. Alright. So that is it for our Goodwill Hunting painting. The last thing you guys can do is just add your signature. And you can do that in either black or white usually works best. I'm going to go with white this time since there is a lot going on. And I'm just going to put my initials right down there. So everyone knows that this is your painting that you did this, guys. There's a lot going on, so I'm proud of you for getting through it. Um, I hope you all stay safe out there, and I, yeah, we would love to see all of the paintings that you guys have done in the comfort of your own home. So if you want to post them to Facebook, Instagram, be sure to tag us so we can check those out. And um, again, thanks for painting with us, you guys, and I hope we'll see you on the next one.